<sighs> well, good morning. Uh, I just realized that I set my alarm to p.m. instead of a.m. last night, and I was supposed to get up about 45 minutes ago. And uh, somehow, luckily, my body still got me up relatively early, but I am heading to the Florida Keys for the rest of the week, and I'm going to see what they're like and try not to get arrested. So, came up with a little list last night, and uh, I'm going to follow it uh, and hopefully not run into any trouble. So, let's get on the road. Keys are. They are a bunch of small islands at the very bottom of Florida that extend out into the ocean. The islands, which are called Keys, are all connected by bridges. I've heard that traffic can be quite congested down here, so that's why I got an early start. So after filling my tank with fuel, I'm on my way to the Keys. First stop in the Keys is at a place called Robbie's. Um, I was recommended to come here to try and be able to feed the tarpon. So I've never fed tarpon before, but apparently you can get right up close to them and feed them. So um, this place looks pretty interesting. Tarpon feeding. Ah, I see a sign right here. will follow the sign. <laughs> no problem. We'll get her taken care of. Have a good day. Solving problems this morning already? That freaking pump blowing out, water spraying everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. Always something. Um, Never done this before, but everybody's like, you got to do this oh, when you, you come to the Keys. And, and I won't charge you admission today. I'll just charge you for a bucket. I'll give you a couple buckets. Okay. For the price of one. Give me $4 and we're good. All right. Cool. Appreciate and, it. Um, basically, what you're going to be doing is you're using thread fin herring to feed 100 and some pound tarpon. Okay. Um, you basically want to hold the fish by the tail. Go down to where the nets are, um, because that's to keep the pelicans away from you. Okay. Fortunately, pelicans are now federally protected, so... Can't all, shoot them? All we, all we can do is, is verbally abuse them. <laughs> and we, we attempt, and apparently it, it makes no damn difference. Huh. But, um, yeah, basically what you want to do is go into one of those net areas. We just had some people feeding. They're generally slower in the morning. Okay. They come back in the afternoon and they're all over the place. Huh. Basically, you hold this right over the water as close as you can. Big old 100 pound fish is going to come up, take it out of your hand, make you scream like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> all right. right. Just watch the pelicans. Keep okay. the bucket in front of you. Okay. Don't so just set so. them to the side because they'll come up. And just tell them to get, get, get. As long as you do that to them, they'll, they'll leave you alone. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Have fun. Thanks. So he gave me a lot more fish than what I paid for. And he said, watch out for the pelicans because they're like aggressive, which they are like walking, hey, get out of here. Shoo, 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 hey, shoo. Anyways, yes, they are. <laughs> okay, I can already see some fish. Holy crap, they're huge. All right, so what I'm supposed to do Let's just hold these fish up right above the water and the, fi the, the bigger fish are just supposed to come and eat them right out of my hand. So here goes nothing. I'm gonna put the strap in my camera so I don't drop it in the water hopefully here. Maybe I'm not in the quite, quite the right spot. Shoot, 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 shoot. All right, let's try this again. No, <laughs> they're all over these stupid pelicans. Alright, let's try this. This looks a little better. <laughs> That's crazy. 
They're huge. Shoo, shoo, shoo. These dang pelicans are the worst. So it seems like you kind of just got to find out where the pelicans aren't at the time. Hey, shoo, shoo. All right, let's try this again. Okay, pelicans are back. Time to find a new spot again. Hey, shoo, shoo. No pelicans, here we go. Dang pelicans make it difficult. <laughs> yeah. This dude just snagged a pelican. He's gonna have to like wrestle this thing to get the hook out of it. Look at them going at that thing. Looks like they've done that before. Well, that was fun. Interesting experience and quite the interesting place here at Robbie's. Um, Talked to the guy that runs it now for a while and he's been feeding, he said he's been feeding fish since 74. So, and uh, he gave me a good recommendation for like a free little county park, I believe it is. And he said there's not much to see as far as like coral and stuff like that for snorkeling, but he said it's free, the water's crystal clear. So I think I'm gonna head up there for the day. All right, so this looks, Decent, I think. Um, American crocodile in the area. We cannot guarantee your safety. Do not approach, do not feed. Keep your distance. Uh, violators will be fined. Oh my goodness. Look what I found. A shower. <laughs> it's been so long. Let's hope it works. Come on. Yes. Oh, that is so exciting. Do not shower inside rest gym. Showers are provided outside. Um, I have no idea how I would shower in here. Um, so I don't know why they have to put that there. Like, do they expect people to shower like right here with that? Sometimes I truly wonder what people think. So there's definitely not much of a view of the water here, but he said the water is supposed to be super duper clear. So maybe I'll uh, get the kayak out and go find where the clear water is. And if I'm brave, maybe I'll jump out of the kayak and try not to get eaten by a crocodile. made dinner I'm having um, two chili dogs and some leftover potatoes that I had and need to eat up and uh, after I finish this I think I'm gonna head back over to Robbie's because they're open till 9 o'clock I think and uh, see what's going on down there because I just don't want to get to my parking spot too early tonight and every night this week so my plan is to arrive as late as possible and leave as early as possible so uh, hopefully not noticed. There's so many cats everywhere. 
they just come out of the bushes and they walk around, but they're scared of people. All right, well, I got to where I think I'm going to park tonight. Um, <laughs> it was a little unclear exactly, but uh, I did find this strange little road back here. Okay, we're gonna go to the right here. Um, it looks very, oh, tight. Whoa. Um, but the ground looks fairly hard, I guess, which is a good thing, because I ain't about ready to get stuck back here by any means. Oh, okay. I thought there's wires up there, but they're just cobwebs. <laughs> oh my. The water is right there. Literally right there. Like that plant is on the edge. That is crazy. This is like an amazing spot. All right, now coming up on a giant gravel pad thing here. Got one other van parked here. So this is looking really good, really good. So I think I'm going to avoid these giant potholes in the ground. And, whoa, oh, so much for avoiding that. <laughs> uh, spin around here quick and call it quits. Luckily, the ground is very gravelly because I have a feeling when the tide is high, this whole area may be full of water. I'm gonna put myself right here, I think. And just in case, the tide comes in and I'm swamped in in the morning. Hopefully I can still get out. Well, made it through the night. Um, it did rain pretty hard for probably about an hour and I was getting a little bit worried that I was gonna get like swamped in here because as you can see, it is kind of like low and puddly in here, but eh, it's not too bad. Today I'm heading to a place called Bahia Honda State Park. I think I'm remembering that correctly. Uh, the main reason for that is because I heard the snorkeling is super amazing there. And um, I'm not sure what else outside of that, but I think I'll spend the day there and we'll go from there. So let's get on the road. This is the old Bahia Honda Bridge. This bridge spans 5,055 feet across the Bahia Honda Channel and was part of the East Coast Railway built by oil mogul Henry Flager between 1905 and 1912. The roadway was built on top of the railway bridge in 1938 as part of the original overseas highway. Use of this bridge stopped in 1972 and then they built this bridge behind me, which is currently the new Highway 1. So today, day two, was a good day. I had a lot of fun. Um, Bahia Honda State Park, I would say, is definitely worth a stop if you're going through the area. And I spent about probably three hours or so in total snorkeling and saw quite a few things. I saw a couple jellyfish. I saw some weird looking flat fish. I thought it was a stingray at first, but I'm pretty confident it wasn't a stingray. There was a bunch of these little teeny, very colorful fish and there was one that was just swimming like right in front of my face and it wouldn't leave for probably a good five or 10 minutes. I saw a bunch of big conch shells. A lot of them had actual big crabs inside, so it was kind of fun to flip them over and you could see the crab crawl back inside. And now it is about quarter after seven and I'm actually at the same spot that I was last night because it seems like a really decent spot. And I'm kind of planning my day for tomorrow and the rest of the evening I'm actually going to start editing this video a little bit and getting it ready to post for you guys. So. I'm excited about tomorrow and uh, the little adventure we're going to do, so get some rest and we will see you in the morning. 
Good morning, everybody. Today, we are going to Key West and we're going on the motorcycle because parking can be expensive and difficult down there, I've heard. We'll see. But it sounds fun to get the bike out and buzz down there. It's about 7.05 right now, so I'm getting a fairly early start and I'm excited to see what Key West has to offer. Oh, doing well. I'll do card. Alrighty. There is scooter parking, but I think they're a little too big for a scooter. Yeah. All right, we made it down here. It was a super nice ride, and now I'm parked at the Fort Zachary Taylor State Park. So there's an old military base here, which I'm about to walk on to and check out and super beautiful beach over there and water again is just super blue green and uh we're just gonna kind of look around and see what this park is like all right so i'm walking around now got uh, i think three places that i want to stop for sure and then just whatever else i pass by it looks interesting but the first place is the most southern part of the united states that you can get to so it's pretty cool that about uh what, four months ago, five months ago, in October, I was in the most northwest part of the country you can get to, in Olympic National Park. So now I'm all the way down here, and uh, definitely a very different uh, climate down here. <laughs> For some reason, there are chickens everywhere down here. Yep, more chickens. They're literally everywhere. Chicken. 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 The next stop for me, and it's not super exciting for me personally, but is the Ernest Hemingway house. Um, he's a well-known author, and this is where he used to live, and you can pay to go on a tour of the house. Um, I think it's like $16 or something for an adult. Like I said, it's not something that interests me a whole lot, so I'm not gonna pay for the tour, but it is neat to see where he lived. Um, it's a very cool building, and has this like brick wall um, surrounding it. So if uh, he is somebody that you find interesting, it's right here. Come take the tour, what I tell you. Holy smokes, I just caught this tree out of the corner of my eye. It's called the Capoke tree. Just a crazy shape. It's not very tall, but the limbs come like, straight out and the roots are just crazy shape. All right, the next spot is mile zero of Highway 1. And surprisingly, there's like nobody here. So I was like wondering if I was in the right spot, but this is where it all begins. It's a cool little shop here. Might go inside and see what they have. Well, that was a cool area to walk around and see. Lots of cool shops and interesting old buildings down there actually. And I'm on my way back to the state park and I think I'm gonna hang out there for a few more hours. And then I think I wanna hit the road by about five o'clock to get back to the van tonight and that way I won't be riding in the dark too much, so. Uh, one thing I failed to mention when I got here is I looked down to see oil dripping from my motorcycle. So, that wasn't a good sign, but uh, I know what's going on. I don't really know what I'm gonna do at this point, but uh, I'm gonna see what kind of tools I have here and extra bolts and such, and hopefully at least be able to make it to the uh, hardware store to pick up what I need. All right, so far so good on the oil leak. Uh, my redneck repair seems to be working really well. Um, so I decided to take a little de detour here. I am in uh, Big Pine Key, and I'm at Blue Hole, which is right behind me here. And I think it's the only body of fresh water down in the Keys here. I just saw some gators, there's two gators right back there at the lookout. And um, what I'm really hoping to see down here is some little key deer. I just saw four on the side of the road when I was riding up here, but I didn't have my GoPro on, unfortunately, so I didn't get them. But hopefully I'll see some down here. <sighs> well, didn't see anything there, so I came to this nature trail up the road. Can't seem to spot any deer, but got this nice platform here. So I was thinking i just stand up here on this bench. They should come any second now, I'd think. Hmm. 
Well, oh well. Uh, at least I saw a few on the road. Maybe they'll be back there when I drive past. Well, made it back. You may have seen that sticker on my van when I pulled it on the motorcycle, and it said that I was illegally parked and am going to be towed. That's okay, I'm gonna drive a little bit. Uh, it's nice sunset, so let's get on the road. Good morning, viewers of this YouTube video. I had a successful night. I was not woken up by any law enforcement, luckily, but it was one of those nights where I didn't get there until about 11, and then I woke up at 6.30 to hopefully be unnoticed. So today I really don't have too much planned other than visiting the Rain Barrel Village, which I just arrived at, and whatever else I drive by that seems interesting today. Well, due to the length of this video, I'm starting to get worried that I've lost a lot of your attention. So I'm just going to give you a quick recap of the rest of my time in the Keys. After the Rain Barrel Village, I visited the Windley Key Fossil Reef Geological State Park. It was a smaller state park, but it had quite a bit of interesting history on the building of the overseas highway and railway back in the day. I decided before I headed to the Keys that I would treat myself to one good meal along the way. I ended up going to the Laura Lee restaurant, which is right on the water, and got to see a nice sunset while eating food. And I also tried a slice of key lime pie there because I had so many people telling me to try it, even though I'm not a key lime guy, but I have to say it was pretty good. My last overnight in the Keys went well without any issues. And my final day I visited John Penn Camp Coral Reef State Park. It's also good for snorkeling, swimming, and has a few hiking trails as well. I also wanted to mention that I've been tracking my expenses over this week and I ended up spending $106 the whole week. That includes any food I bought down there, all of the state park entry fees, and gas. Now of course I saved a lot of money by not having to pay for lodging, but I just wanted to show that there are quite a few reasonably priced things to do in the Keys, especially the state parks, which were only $4.50 or $2.50 for each entry. If you made it to the end of this video, thanks for hanging out the whole time, and I appreciate all of you that gave me recommendations on things to do and what to see down in the Keys.